Well, hi there, I'm Colin Lamb, aka The Tone Wizard, and I hope you're doing very well wherever it is that you may happen to be. I'm doing well, thank you for asking. And in this video, I'm going to be giving a track-by-track -track review of Fish's album, Billy Breathes. Before I get into that, I'd just like to ask you to, after this video, to check out my channel for more Fish content, bad guitar lessons, and so much more. Uh, also, I'm gonna be trying to make a playlist of my favorite Fish as I go along through these album reviews. I'm reviewing each of uh, Fish's studio um, albums in succession. So let's get right into it. Released on the 15th of October in 1996, this is Fish's uh, sixth album in the discography, uh, the studio discography that is, preceded by 1994's Hoist and followed by the story of the ghost in 1998, which I'm going to be taking a look at next. Um, this album was produced by Steve Lillywhite at the recommendation of Dave Matthews. And during a 2011 interview with Music Radar, Lillywhite stated the following. The band can play anything, which then raises the question, well, what should they play? With Billy Breeze, it's the closest thing they got to making what I would say is a good stoner album. You know what I mean. You put on the CD, you fire up a big one. <laughs> And down the road you go. There hadn't been a good stoner record since the dark side of the moon. Billy Breathes got close. I keep telling Trey Anastasio we can make a better one. Now, I don't know if that is true. But what I will say, um, I think there's lots of good stoner albums. There's definitely lots of albums that I've just fucking enjoyed while being stoned. Uh, I could name a thousand of them. So I won't digress into that. If you know any good stoner albums which came after this or even before this, but after the dark side of the moon, let me know in the comments. Um, I will say that this is probably my the, the best sounding fish album so far that I've gone through in the discography. And there's a number of reasons for that that I think we'll talk about at the end. Now, getting right into it. Track number one, Free. Um, I think I thought this might be a later version of that that kind of reggae song that's like free, 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 the, the, the bad reggae one that I think I, I mentioned uh, in, in one of the earlier uh, albums. I can't quite recall which one it was, but I didn't enjoy that. However, as I listen to this one, uh, getting my morning started, I, I would say that this might be the strongest starting track in the discography so far. Um, it didn't waste any time. It got right into a great track. Uh, and I would love some live recommendations for this particular track. If you can get at me in the comments there with those, I'd really like to hear those, those free harmonies going in full swing live. So please let me know and preferably one with video. I like to watch. I like to watch. Uh, well, the auto wah or the wah filter or the auto filter on the bass, I think adds a lot in this track without getting too squishy. Sometimes that can really make it sound like you're, you're wading through a bit of muck in the marshes somewhere. But I really did like the sound of that on this one. And I thought that uh, Paige McConnell's keyboard playing proves to me yet again that I think that man could put tasteful and appropriate um, acoustic grand piano onto almost anything. Um, and I, I do remember somebody saying that they thought that I think I can recall somebody saying in a comment that they thought that fish took a bit of a downturn when Paige started having the grand piano on stage with them but I just don't see it it's a beautiful sounding instrument and the man can certainly play appropriately and effectively to almost anything track number two was character zero um it was kind of a positive track that if I'm honest with you I'm, I'm not likely going to remember after this but that's okay uh, I, I'm just being honest I, I do like fish um this is a kind of a forgettable track but they have lots of memorable ones that I'm collecting as I move on in my journey through fish and if you are new here I did a whole series about getting into fish and if you're watching from my channel and you're not into fish maybe check out those videos and see if you yourself can also get into some fish anyways track number three is probably thus far my all-time favorite um, fish track maybe not this studio version um, but it is one that I've loved right since day one I think a buddy of mine on YouTube um, he does the learn to wean channel he kind of turned me on to some live footage and it featured a performance of waste that I really loved my favorite live version of waste is the 914 1999 Boys State University Pavilion performance. Uh, you can check that out. I don't think there's video, but there is a pretty good version on Spotify and YouTube there. But maybe let me know your favorite waste in the comments and uh, I'll have a listen to that when I get some time. Now, I also noticed that on the studio version, which I'm not even sure if I've ever really heard, to be honest with you, which is kind of shocking, um, but there's a little banjo on the outro that I, I, I found quite snappy and enjoyable, if not necessary. Track number four is Taste. Um, Taste is another kind of skippable track for me, to be honest. There wasn't much there to sink your teeth into, but I was kind of, 
kind of doing these album reviews like I in the way that I actually listen to music. I've kind of been doing some stuff in the background. Um, and when a song kind of grabs me, I'll go in there for a little deeper analysis. Um, track number five is Cars, Trucks, and Buses, which comes in with a nice little uh, pumpy kind of Hammond. I think it's a Hammond organ, a B3, I think it was. I don't think it's a Rose. It sound too, sounded too acoustic to be a Rhodes. Um, but I was just listening to this, and I was like, my wife and my son were headed out for a little little jaunt. I'm doing a bit of a dry February here, much to my chagrin. I'm not doing a dry Super Bowl, though. Let me tell you that. I even booked a Monday off. I'm getting fucking absolutely shit can fucking wasted on Sunday. And I'm going to come home. I'm going to come home. My strategy for not letting my wife know how wasted it, I, I'm going to be when I get home is I'm just not going to say anything. I'm going to go take a shower uh, and just try and wait her out in there until she goes to bed or we run out of hot water. Either way. Um, I did enjoy this track and I thought it was like a sneaky little theme to kind of bump around to. Uh, track number six, Talk, is an upbeat floater, which I think, again, is kind of a more of a skippable track, which brings us to track number seven, which would be the next one that I actually really enjoyed. Um, and I also, as I was listening to this, I thought there, there may have been a two, two bass parts going on, one doing a low kind of thing, and then another one doing almost like a harmony line. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about that. But once again, as I said, this is probably the best sounding, uh, Fish album so far in the discography. And I really liked that Mike was way more present in, in the mix. And I don't know if that was the case or if the thing was just mixed better and EQ'd a lot better. But I really enjoyed that you could pick out everything and hear it quite easily um, if you like. Now, I did read that this album was influenced by a scuba trip, I believe, that Trey and some of the guys took. And I have to say, um, I, I want, once went uh, cage diving in Australia. The first time I went to go visit... Um, my, meet my wife's family in Australia. They asked if there's anything that uh, we wanted to do. And I said, cage diving with great white sharks offhandedly as a joke. And when I got there, they had arranged uh, the whole trip. And let me just say the tone wizard has married well, because that was an enjoyable experience. But I will say the, mo the more frightening thing than the, the sharks was the scuba experience, because I had a wetsuit on. I got down into the water and I was just getting used to breathing through it. I don't like to not be able to breathe through my fucking nose. Um, I've had a lot of sinus problems in my life. Um, and I got down there and the water shot, got through the suit. It was fucking frigid and it just scared the shit out of me. There's bubbles everywhere. I looked, my arm was outside the cage. There's sharks floating around, but the scuba experience was more frightening for me than the shark. Track number eight is Train Song. It has a beautiful two-part harmony, which I think is sung both parts by Trey. I could be wrong there because these guys actually have very similar kind of timbres of voices. And it's that little restricted, gentle, I'll never do you any harm kind of fish singing in there, which I sometimes I wish that fish had a little more grit in there, but, but it's, they do their own thing. And I also like the wonderful brooding cello that's kind of sneaks up in there. Track number nine is Bliss. And if I'm honest with you, it's a nice introspective fader, but it could just really be called the Billy Breathes prelude or Billy Breathes intro. They could have just slapped it on the front of there. These guys aren't afraid of putting a 15 minute song on an album. And I think they could have done that there. Track number 10, Billy Breathes is a beautiful recording um, with a perfect build to a classic Anastasio guitar gasm. And I think I'm really, you know, as I hear the things that come out of my mouth when I'm talking about fish lately, I think I'm, I'm fully in there. I did this series again, getting into fish on my uh, channel. And I think it's fucking happened because I've got these little phrases that I've started to use. Um, but after I was listening to it, as it was winding down, I had two thoughts. One being that it would be the perfect way to end this album. Um, and I think Fish has done this before. I think I think it was Hoist um, or A Picture of Nectar where they did one of their fucking big, like, live staple, huge 12, 10, whatever minute tracks. And then they had a bunch of little little sputters at the end there. So I was listening to that and the, the little guitar outro. It's kind of like a little little harmony outro to the big guitar gasm. And, um, and I thought it was actually a bit reminiscent of the guitar harmony outro of Bohemian Rhapsody, that, that just those fading little simmering little guitars. I, I thought the album could have ended there and I wouldn't have been unhappy about it. Which brings us to track number 11, which is Swept Away, which I felt kind of just sucked the, the, um, the Billy Breeze momentum out of the album. Nice little piece of music. I don't know if they ever perform it live. Maybe let me know in the comments. Track number 12, Steep 
is an inter- and I was listening to this one. I didn't have much other to say other than like, is there some kind of internal or high quality recording of a heartbeat? Like you can hear the organ and the blood squishing. It sounded kind of gross. I don't know. I know that there's been recent uh, innovations in the the porn uh, industry that has sent cameras up into the body, and I'm wondering if maybe Fish pioneered that somehow. I don't know. It's probably none of my business if I'm being honest with you. The final track, track number 13, and a little bit of a redemption for me, as I say, that could have the album, in my opinion, could have ended after Billy Breathes, um, but Prince Caspian. Uh, immediately, I was like, oh, no, we got a fucking another one and a half minute intro here. But then at one and a half minutes, the scrunchy little Trey guitar starts up just playing a straightforward kind of 4-4 four, four rocker riff, and things really get going. And I was even thinking as I listened to this, this that um, this is probably a cover that I'm going to want to add to my repertoire. I think I'm going to learn this song, and, but I'm just going to start it at, at uh, one one thirty where he begins the riff. Now, I looked into this track, and apparently it's a divisive track amongst the fans, with some fans even labeling the track as fucker pants for some reason. If you know that reason, maybe let me know down in the comments. Um, but I really like the track, and apparently Trey does too, because I looked into it on fish.net, and I found that it's played in like 8% of all fish shows, once every six fish shows on average, and there hasn't been a significant gap in the performances of that track live in almost 20 years. So you tell me, fucker pants. Is this a bad song, or are you just a little grumpy? I want to, if you don't like the song, I tell you what. Why don't you go on a little bathroom break? Go, uh, go find a balloon salesman, or whatever it is you do with your free time when you're missing, you know, one of the best live bands of all time play one of the singer's favorite songs. Obviously, Fish likes it, Trey likes it, and if you don't like it, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. So I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this album. Before I do, I just want to ask that if you've enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Please go check out some of the other stuff. I do a wide range of, of pretty much whatever I feel like on the channel, and I really feel that if you like this video, there's something else on the channel for you. But I'm going to give you my thoughts on the album now. So this is definitely the best fit sounding fish album by far, thanks perhaps in large part to Steve Lillywhite. All the instruments sound great. It sounds like a much better mixture of everything. Page and Fishman, I think, are a little understated on the album, but that might just be because it's mixed so well and that a lot of these songs are kind of simple in composition and don't maybe have a lot of room for some wild instrumental ex ex uh, explorations. And I think that maybe everybody on this album uh, is playing to the is, is playing what's appropriate serving the song i guess would be the cliche there but even trey is pretty mellow by his standards on this one and the standards of the earliest uh earlier earlier uh records so this is these are peaceful compositions that i would say and it kind of maybe speaks to the fact that i think this was a positive time for the band i know there were some indulgence issues that crept up but i think that was a little later on maybe let me know down in the comments about that i could be wrong but i think a lot of that stuff really started to sour in uh, 99 but from the sound of this um they're in a great place and they got some pretty peaceful tracks so the highlights for me on this album would be free waste and theme from the bottom and uh divisive but i would say prince caspian's a great track too let me know what your favorite tracks are in the comments below and let me know if you have any great live versions you'd like me to check out of any of these songs or if there's a great live version of one of the songs i really didn't feel on the album that you think could change my mind there so i'm going to give this one a solid six out of ten severed experimental uh medical hands uh hit sitting in a snowbank wrapped in a ups uh, box out of 10 and if you know what that that means you know so thank you very much for watching this video take very good care of yourself um, keep an eye on my channel for the next fish album review and for other videos of varying quality and content goodbye <laughs>